As we approach the next generation of gaming, there is one thing we most certainly need to talk about. The biggest bottleneck of the last generation as referenced over and over again by developers and hardware enthusiasts was the CPU. Mark Cerny even expressed in the Road to PS5 GDC talk that the architecture of the smaller die of the PS5 CPU provides leaps and bounds of performance over the current PS4 consoles. So, before we get started, we need to talk about what the CPU does and why it is important. You see, the GPU can't render a single thing without the CPU. The CPU is responsible for a myriad of tasks. Those tasks include input from the player, NPC actions, instructions to the GPU, and simulations of environment and interactive elements. Without getting too far into the technical weeds, because of the aforementioned, it is a crucial component of any gaming machine. When it comes to console gaming, it can be a critical factor in achieving the goals of a game. For the past generation of gaming, a single game comes to mind when thinking about how much impact a CPU can affect the performance of a game. That game is Assassin's Creed Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity was the first Assassin's Creed game that was specifically made for the current generation of consoles. It is preceded by the incredible cross-generation game Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Some of the major features that made Unity an upgrade over Black Flag were the lighting, the vast increase in the number of NPCs on screen, and the physically based rendering of meshes and material in the game. If you were to look at screenshots of the game today, you'd see that this is still one of the prettiest games made for this generation of gaming. But two things killed the game at launch. The internet was a buzz with screenshots that circulated quickly of the bugs that rendered the game. And the performance on consoles was absolutely abysmal, sitting in the sub-30 FPS range any time the screen was filled with NPCs or anything difficult to render. For both the PS4 and Xbox One, the game didn't even run at a native 1080p. Instead, it ran at an upscaled resolution of 900p. The game was supposed to be a showcase of what current generation consoles were capable of, and instead, it showed how incapable they were. But what made this outing for Assassin's Creed so bad? Black Flag looked great and played great on current generation consoles. So how did Unity suffer so badly? Well, it is widely thought throughout the community that Ubisoft was just too ambitious with this title. They overestimated the capability of the consoles and tried too many features at once. One place that we can see that this may be true is in the release following Unity. See, Assassin's Creed Syndicate saw a dramatic scaling back in both lighting and the number of NPCs, as well as the removal of interior rooms. Even the namesake multiplayer feature of Unity was removed from Syndicate. So the key question for the purposes of this discussion is how do we know that these features, the ones that were removed from Syndicate coming from Unity, are CPU bound features? There are a couple reasons we know this. We know the number of NPCs seen on screen, along with their AI, are handled by the CPU. This is common across many games and a feature that can heavily influence the immersion of a game. Developers have been trying to push the number of NPCs on screen in an upwards direction since the early days of gaming. This is why we have steadily seen an increase in the number of NPCs in games from gaming generation to gaming generation. But in terms of the rest of the features, there is one major clue that tells us a CPU is a limiting factor for AC Unity. That is, aside from the quotes from the developers themselves. Simply, the Xbox One saw better performance in many areas of the game, especially when a higher number of NPCs were on the screen. The only time the PS4 saw any advantage at all was when it was a post-processing or GPU-bound task that needed to be completed. This is all heavily documented by Digital Foundry and Eurogamer. We know that on the CPU side of things, the Xbox One had a near 10% advantage of speed with a nearly identical architecture, while the PS4 had slower but more sizable GPU in terms of compute units. For the sake of simplicity, we'll just say that the PS4 had an advantage in GPU bound tasks and the Xbox One had an advantage in compute. This is quite different as we go into the next generation and see that the Xbox Series X has an advantage in both compute and in graphics. So I can hear you saying it right now. Azrio, get to the stinking point, man. 
Well, okay, I hear you. Here's the point. The CPU absolutely matters to games. When looking at features of games right now, the one that comes to mind more than anything is ray tracing. The Unreal Engine 5 demo showed off global illumination, which includes ray tracing. Global illumination was baked into Assassin's Creed Unity, meaning that it was not rendered in real time. It could not be rendered in real time because of the lack of computational horsepower available to the current generation titles and how new the developers were to the PS4 and Xbox One hardware at the time. Both the PS5 and Xbox Series X will be able to do real-time global illumination and ray tracing. Both next-gen consoles share very similar CPUs based on the Zen 2 architecture from AMD. And supposedly both consoles feature dedicated hardware for ray tracing, although a lot of information on that has yet to materialize. The question now is, what does this mean for us gamers? In short, we should see better lighting, better NPC AI, hopefully more interesting interactivity with the environment and NPCs, better animation by way of procedural animation, and small improvements that should culminate into a more immersive and interesting gameplay. And that should trickle down throughout the industry. Will there be a huge difference between the two next-gen consoles? That's kind of hard to say. Xbox really only has a huge advantage when not taking advantage of multi-threading. However, we also know that the PS5 is using variable clock speeds to more effectively limit heat by way of keeping voltage steady. The PS5 CPU shares its power with the GPU. This could mean that the PS5 will send more power to the GPU regularly, thus limiting the speed of the clock of the CPU. The reason for this is that the GPU may need as much power as possible to hit its max speed. So all in all, the Xbox has an advantage on the CPU, but how wide of an advantage, we don't really know yet. One thing is for certain, developers have always found ways to use a CPU to do incredible things, and this is the beauty of targeting a console. The target is simple and clear. Scalability isn't always needed. The developer understands the amount of headroom they have and can push their game to the limits. This means that we should be seeing some incredible games this generation, and they should be doing things that the last generation only wished it could have. Okay, so that was another scripted video. I am so glad that you came by and watched another one of my goofy scripted videos. A lot of people liked the last one, so I thought I'd do it again. Uh, I did finally get a haircut. I probably look a lot different to people that don't know me without uh, curly hair or a fro, uh, but it looks a lot better, I think. So, a uh, couple things to go over real quick. Uh, again, thank you for those who have subscribed. Super appreciate it. I'm over 70, or at least the last I looked, so I'm really happy about that. I want to hit 100 as soon as possible, because I just feel like that's the first big milestone for me. 50 was good, but I want to hit 100 subscribers. I feel really good about that. And then the other thing I want to do is when I get to 1,000 subscribers, just low-key announce me here. I'm going to do a giveaway. It's going to be good. Well, it's going to be good if uh, I can get my hands on what I want to give away. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's quite a ways away because we haven't come close to 1,000. But uh, one of the key things is you got to be subscribed to the channel to win that giveaway. So if you're subscribed now, that's great. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And then share the video, get as many people to subscribe as possible, because the sooner you get to 1,000, the sooner I do the giveaway. And, you know, the sooner we get to 1,000, the sooner I do the giveaway, then also that means the, you know, the smaller number, when there's only 1,000 people to give the giveaway to, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, chances there, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll be doing it for everyone who subscribed at the time of the giveaway, it's once we hit that 1,000 threshold, so... <sighs> Okay, I'll stop rambling. I super appreciate you guys watching my videos. I hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, I'm still trying to come up with other ideas. I want to talk a lot about the tech of games, but I want to talk about games too. If there's games you would like to see me review, uh, please put those in the comments below. I would love to talk about a game that you love and uh, play something different that maybe I haven't played before. 
I tend not to go towards horror, so I'll probably stay away from like Resident Evil. But if there's another game that you would like me to review, please put it in the comments below. I want to start doing reviews. I think uh, my gameplay experience, my breadth of knowledge of across genres uh, would be really fun to put into a review. It might take me a while to do a review because I hardly ever finish a game. Uh, so that's the other thing I want to talk about. I want to get to streaming soon. Me and my computer cannot stop doing the notifications. I'm not starting over on this recording. Forget you notifications. But, uh, so I want to start streaming again, and I will start streaming my backlog. So I have a backlog that's a million years long, and if there's a game you would like to see me play, please let me know. I will play it. And then the other thing is, hopefully I can get some better lighting and a better camera soon. So I hope you guys are enjoying. Again, I appreciate you guys showing up. I appreciate your support. I appreciate the subscribes. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the haters. I gave Xbox some props in this video. So you Xbox guys, look, I'm I'm just as happy for you. You guys are going to get a great console. Uh, and it means nothing. Uh... To necessarily playstation guys but to you guys it means a lot and i know that and i'm super happy for you guys you're getting a great console this time around uh, since phil spencer's come on during the xbox one time you guys have had a great time and i'm really excited to see what phil spencer does in the xbox team and all the new xbox studios so maybe i'll talk about that soon anyway that's enough rambling from me again i love you guys i appreciate you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.